Good evening, good evening, good evening, my brothers and sisters. We're at the midpoint of the week. So come on in and get some of this good food for your soul. Go ahead and invite some more family members and friends to the dinner table. And also keep in mind, we may have some guests. So have a little room at the front, especially those of you at the front. Have a little room for our guests so they can come in and get some of this good food for the soul. If this is your first time at the dinner table, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tony M. Toomer, and I talk about relationships. And I talk about relationships, my brothers and sisters, from basically a spiritual point of view. When I say spiritual, I strictly mean that I believe strongly in the relationship, how God established a relationship between a man and a woman in the Garden of Eden. That's my position. So God had a unique relationship with Adam. He had a unique relationship with Eve. He represented the woman to the man, that man being Adam, the woman being Eve. In the presence of God, Adam said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, I should call a woman because she came from man. That's my position. If you have another position on a relationship, God gave you a free will. You can do whatever you choose to do. But I'm straight to the point, my brothers and sisters, no chases here. I talk strictly from God's point of view when you look in the book of Genesis, okay? Uh, my brother and sister, I'm on two different platforms. I'm on the book and I'm on the two. Those of you that are on the two, I may make some comments to those that are on the book. You may see that you may not see their names and comments, but I will call it their names and comments. And on the flip side of the coin, those of you on the book, I may make some comments to those that are on the two. You may not see their name in comments when I call it out, but we're all family here, okay? So we're on two different platforms. And by the way, if you have any questions or comments at the dinner table, by all means, ask. But be very respectful because it's family time, okay? And we may have some guests that's going to want to come and see what's this dinner table thing about. So we're going to have to be on our best behavior, okay? With that said, let's look at the menu. And let's have this uh, good food for the soul brought to our table so we can feast on it. Now, when you look at the top of the menu, uh, on the menu for tonight is you knew that he or she was in a relationship with someone else. Now, let's see how far it will go. This is what we're going to talk about, okay? Now, my brothers and my sisters, what do I mean when it comes to another relationship? What do I mean by that? I'm referring to a man or a woman that is in a serious, committed, and covenant relationship with another man or woman before you. Or uh, you could have been uh, in the picture, but that man or woman decide to get in a serious and covenant well, Siri come in and cut relationship with someone else, okay? And that's what we're going to talk about at the dinner table. Now, how you doing, Sister Flo? Welcome to the dinner table, sister. Now, let's go to the appetizer, okay? Let's get a little appetizer before we get into the main course, okay? As it is written in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, 28. Again, Matthew, chapter 5, 28. Matthew, chapter 5, 28. Jesus is doing the talking, okay? Jesus is doing the narrative, and this is what Jesus said. But I say unto you, how you doing, Sister Allen? Welcome to the dinner table. Jesus said this, I say unto you that whosoever look on a woman to lust after her have already committed adultery with her already in his heart. And, it could, and the coin could flip. It also mean a woman. So. When it comes to adultery, a lot of men and women think, and I have touched on this before at the dinner table, a lot of men and women think they immediately think about sex. That's the first thing a man and woman think about when it comes to adultery, sex, right? They're actually thinking about the penis going inside of a woman's vagina. That's what most people, that's the first thing, but it starts so before the penis penetrates a woman's vagina. So if you if you got in a little children, you may want to tell them to go in another room because I'm going to call it how it is, but being very respectful. 
there are a lot of men and women that think, oh, they having an affair. It's not an affair. He or she got a side chick. It ain't no he or she got a side chick. If the man and woman is married, it's called adultery. Let's call it what the Bible call it, okay? If a man and woman is not married, like I used to do, when I was not married, I had a lot of things going on. You see, I did not just sleep with women. Somebody calling me messing up, but I got that known for the moment. Hold on. Okay. When I was, let's call it, let's call a spade a spade. When I was not married, when I had sexual relation with a woman, it was not called making love. It was called, from God's point of view, it's called fornication. What is fornication? Fornication is when you have sex with someone else and you didn't say I do before God. That's fornication. We know that sex is a beautiful thing. What do I mean by sex is a beautiful thing? Sex is a beautiful thing called God created sex to go down between a man and a woman that is married. But the world would call it making love getting some and all that kind of stuff that what the world would call it god called it fornication now if a man and woman is married and a man or woman go outside the relationship before they do the, the before they do the hokey pokey with someone else they have already thought about it in their mind and heart okay before they did the hokey pokey with somebody else and you all know what i'm talking about right so it, it happens on the inside of the man or woman's heart before it, it physically could go down. So a lot of you brothers and a lot of you sisters, if God allowed you to read your mate mind, I'm talking to you married brother and sister, if God allowed you to read your mate mind, my brother and sister, to tell you the truth, it would not be a whole lot of people married today. Married people lust after other people. Let me put it out there. May, some of you think that when a man and woman get married, and I'm talking to a lot of you Christian brothers and a lot of you Christian sisters, you actually think that when a man and woman get married, I'm talking about a Christian man and a Christian woman, we already know the world, the world of men, the world of women, it ain't nothing, it ain't nothing to them about this. How you doing, sister Tierra? What's the deal type? When it comes to world of men and women, it ain't nothing but a G thing, baby. But when it comes to a Christian man and a Christian woman, if you are married, before you do the hokey pokey with another man or a woman, if you think about it and you lust after another man or woman, Jesus said you already done it in your heart. Now, some people say, well, if I thought about it, I might as well do it. No, you don't. And I always say this, my brother and sister, it's a thought. The thought happened first. And I always say this. I'm not the author of this, what I'm about to say, but I always say this. You cannot stop a bird from flying over your head. The bird represents a fleeing thought. But you can stop the bird from building on top of your head. What does that mean? You start really thinking about it. You now, you are direct, you are the director, you the executive producer, the producer, the writer, the actor, and the actress in the movie. And you're gonna bring this picture together. That's what I'm talking about. The bird building a nest on your head. You don't have to do it. Okay? That's called temptation. And we ain't talk about the group from Motown, but it's called temptation. What is temptation? Temptation is when every man is drawn away by his own lust when he or she is enticed. And when you give place to it, when you submit to it, that brings forth sin. And when, when sin is finished, it brings forth death, that spiritual death. I can get deep into it, but that's another time, another place. Now, lust, my brother and sister, it is defined as a strong craving for sex. Not only sex, you can lust. It can also mean hunger for anything like power, clothes, or whatever, but it's love. Lust is a different from love, my brother and sister. Now, back to the topic. You knew, some of you Christian brothers, you knew some of you Christian sister, that that man or that woman was in a serious, committed, and covenant relationship with someone else. You knew it. 
It didn't surprise you. You knew. You knew it. You were told. You knew. You it was fact. It didn't surprise you. You didn't. You didn't just walk into it. I'm talking to some of you that knew it. You knew it. So you knew for sure, brother, or you knew for sure, sister, that that man or that woman, and I'm talking to some of you right now that are in this mess right now. You in the mess right now. You other brother and sister, go ahead and relax while I'm talking to some of these brothers and sisters that's in this mess. Some of these brothers and sisters that are in the mess, you call me. How you doing, Sister Joanne? Welcome to the Dell Table. You call me. You want to have consultation with me. Let me tell you this. I don't want to take your money from you, okay? I could, but this, this is a freebie. Some of you all don't know that I do relationship counseling, right? But you know now. Now, but for this particular group, I want you to save your money. This is a freebie. And those of you that's listening, you get some free information, okay? Okay, you get some free information tonight at the dinner table. Some of you brothers and sisters, you knew that that man or woman was in a relationship with someone else. Now, here's the clincher. This is the clincher. You decided to, stay, to get with that man or woman when he or she decided to leave their former relationship from their husband or their wife to be with you. You knew it, brother. You knew it, sister. That man, sister, or that woman, brother, they was in a serious, committed, and covenant relationship. Whatever reason they used, you were the main reason, per se, for he or she making that decision to leave his or her mate. I have seen this kind of situation happen so many times, my brother and sister, and it always ends the same thing, the same way. As you know, King Solomon wrote that there's nothing in the Ecclesiastes. King Solomon wrote this. And King Solomon, for those of you that don't know King Solomon, he was David's son. And I'm not talking about King David. King David was the second king of Israel, and his son Solomon was the, the third king. Solomon was known as the wisest man to ever live. Also, he was the richest man to ever live. Don't go by what you hear other people saying, the richest man and all that kind of stuff. Solomon is the only man. Solomon, Solomon is the only man, my brother. Or Solomon, somebody keep calling me. Hold on. Solomon is the only man, my brother. Solomon is the only man, my sister, that was the wisest, richer man to ever live. And he was also over another country. Not one man could say that that's living today. But Solomon had wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to see, to see things from God's point of view, okay? Now, you knew, brother, or you knew, sister, that that man and woman was in a relationship a serious committed and covenant relationship with someone else. And he or she decided to get with you strictly. That's what we that's where we're coming from. He or she decided to get with you. It could have been other problems in that man or woman form relationship, but they they made a decision to come and be with you. Now, what do you think is going to happen? That's what we're going to talk about. What do you think is going to happen? I got seven points to make. Number one. You are going to get what is called a dopamine hit. This is the first thing you're going to get when that man or woman decide to leave his wife or her husband. You're going to get a major dopamine hit. Now, what do I mean by dopamine? Dopamine is defined as a chemical released in your brain that makes you feel good or to say it differently is mostly notable involved in helping or feel pleasure as part of the brain rewarding system. Bottom line, you're going to feel so happy because you think, brother, or you think, sister, that you have won the big prize at the fair. You think you have won the big teddy bear, right? Or to say it differently, you think that you have hit the lotto. But when you hit the lotto, what happened? Well, a lot of people don't talk about when you hit the lotto. 
you have to pay taxes. The government get their taxes before you get your multi millions, okay? But it's another thing that you don't know about. Not only does the government get their taxes before you get your check, you think that's over with, right? You think it's over. You think I got all these million dollars and it's over. Uh-uh. What you don't know is you move into a higher tax bracket. And when you move into a higher tax bracket, they're going to hit you again. And that's the same thing that happened to a relationship. Number two, reality sets in. What do I mean by reality sets in? You are going to see, brother, more of that woman. And sister, you're going to see more of that man. You're going to see the real person. As Clint Eastwood would say, you're going to see the good, you're going to see the bad, and you're going to see the ugly. You're going to see that man or woman how they really is. You see, you weren't really seeing how that man or woman really is. You were listening to how he or she complained about their mates. That's what you were doing. You were listening to how they complained about their mates, okay? So when you seen how they were complaining about their mate, this is what you did. You took sides because you didn't see, because most of the time when a man and woman tell you about his or her mate, they don't tell you about their side. They always playing like they the victim. And I'm sorry to say this, sister, but a lot of times it seems like women play the part of the victim more than men. But I need to be quiet and move on. Men, you play the victim too. But a lot of times from what I hear, when I do relationship counseling, most of the time, women appear to have be had that vic that victim mentality. It's some brothers too, but most of the time it's women. So you're gonna see the real person. Then you're gonna start thinking, he or she said that about his or her mate, but now I see he or she could have been the problem. Or you could be with a man or woman that been in several relationships and they always the victim. They got married. And you find out that that man or woman possibly is the common denominator. You got a problem now, right? Which leads to number three. You're going to try to fix the leak. It's just like a small leak in the pipe. You see the problem. Now you're going to try to run and fix it. You're going to do some patch. You're going to try to do some patch up work. That's what you're going to try to do. You're going to. You're going to try to patch it up before the plumber comes. And you might be appear to be successful. So you're going to go get that. You're going to go get some uh, Gorilla Glue and all that kind of other stuff that will be having on TV to fix a leak, right? But And you, you think you're all good because you're saving money. Uh-uh. You ain't saving no money because guess what? The leak is, number four, the leak is going to get big, bigger. It's going to get bigger. Whatever you use, that temporary filler, it's going to burst. It's going to burst, brother and sister, right in your face. Now you got a major problem. Even the plumber can't fix it. The plumber going to say you need to get a whole new system. It's going to cost you. That's what's going to happen. It's going to cost you, my brother. It's going to cost you, my sister, because you got a big problem. You know what the big problem is? You ignore it. That that man or woman was married to another man or another woman, and you thought that you were going to be an exception to the rule. You thought that everything was going to be hunky dory, right? You thought you forgot about a particular law, and you know that particular law is. Some people will say. If you seen that movie that Eddie Murphy was on and in, in Holly Berry and what that other chick name? Um Eddie Murphy, Holly Berry, Martin Lawrence, David Greer, and what that young lady named that Mike Tyson used to be married to, Robin Given, Boomerang. What happened when you throw out throw out a boomerang at comeback? Or you know the thing called karma, what goes around comes around. But even Jesus made a statement too. And we're going to talk about that shortly. And now we move it to number five. It's called reaping and sowing. Jesus said that through the spirit of Paul, 
when Paul wrote this to the Galatians, as it is written in chapter 6, 70.5, be not deceived. God is not marked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. You see, that's what a lot of men and women think. And let me let me put something in. Let me give you some free, some more free information, my brother and sister. There's no such thing as a man stole a woman, a man's wife from another man. There's no such thing as he stole her. There's no such thing as a woman stole a man from his wife. The man that was with his wife willfully decided to leave his wife. Because the other woman did not hold no gun or knife or to him. And the woman that left her husband, she willfully decided to leave her husband. The man did not hold no knife or gun to her. So when a man leaves his wife strictly for another woman, and a, and a woman leaves her husband strictly for another um, gender, the opposite gender, this is what's going to happen. It's called reaping and sowing. God is not marred. Whatsoever a man sow, he's going to reap. You got to reap, my brother. You got to reap, my sister. You're not going to get away clean. Because what you did in front of God, he was displeased. Now, it might look cute in front of your family and friends, because more than like your family and friends may like that man or woman. And then some of them might not like him at all. But a lot of time, you have introduced that man or woman to your family. They have became part of your family and your friends. So they're used to it. So when you get married, you're going to have this big wedding, right? You're going to have this big wedding, and you think you're going to have a real blessed marriage. It looks good, right? It looks good. What does, what does Satan do? He bring you something in a box and it got a big ribbon on it and it looked pretty a lot of men that left a wife for another woman they have the big wedding and they go on the big trip they go on the islands and get married a lot of women do the same thing they have the big wedding they want to go somewhere exotic but guess what reality is setting in what have happened that man and that woman a seed was planted how you doing such share welcome to the dinner table a seed was planted. And when you plant a seed, a harvest is going to come. You understand? A harvest is going to come. So some of you women that listening to me out there, you knew that man left his wife strictly for you. And some of you brothers, you know that woman left her husband strictly for you. Because you all said you love one another. You weren't loving one another. You were lusting after one another. You actually wanted. You were doing what was called covenants. You desired what another man or another woman had. And he or she decided to come to you. You didn't take her. So don't be patting yourself on the back. Don't be doing no high five. That man or woman exercised his free will to come to you. And you think that you're going to be exempt? You think you're going to have a good life with that man or woman? Which goes to number six. You're going to start going to people to help you resolve the problem. It's going to get out of hand. It's just a matter of time. The clock going to tick, 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 tick. It's just a matter of time, my brother. It's just a matter of time. So you're going to get what is called an explosion. You're going to go talk to other men. You're going to go to talk to other women. You're going to go, going to go talk to your family member, your friends and all that. And then you ain't going to like what they say. And let me tell you what's going to happen when you talk to your family and friends. They're going to get tired of you talking about it. And let me tell you what they're going to talk about you behind your back. They're going to say it. He knew she, he knew she was married to somebody else. He knew it. Or they're going to say she knew he was married to someone else. What do they expect? But when you come around, they're going to be cheesing and they're going to act like they got compassion and understanding. But when you turn your back on them, they're going to start talking about you. They're going to say, you're going to, you think that you think your family and friend going to really support you in that stuff, right? They're going to say, you are, you were a fool 
to basically leave that. They're going to say this about you, sister. You were a fool to lead that man. He was a godly man. He loved, he loved her. He loved his family. He was a godly man. He put God first in his life. And she left him for one of Satan's sons. And the reverse is true. She was a godly woman. She was, she was a Proverb 31 woman. She was, not, she was not one of those women that hang out in the street and do the twerking. She was a wise woman. She took care of her family, especially her husband. She took care of God. She went to God. She went to, she supported her husband, her children, family. She was not out in the streets. But he left her for a floozy. Everybody knew she was a floozy. Everybody that ran through her. The whole football team ran through her. And that's what he went to. Now he crying. He crying like a baby. Boo hoo, boo hoo. He crying like a baby. Thank you, Sister Cheryl. He crying like a baby. Do you you think some people are going to really have sympathy on you? You may have one or two people that have a little sympathy with you. But in general, they're going to be talking about you. They're going to say you're a fool. And I'll count F-O-O-L because you knew that man or woman was in a serious committed covenant relationship. You knew it. You wanted that man or woman. He wanted you. He or she made a, a decision to actually leave strictly for you. That's what we're talking about. When a man or woman strictly leave a relationship for you, brother, or you, sister, and you think you're going to get a blessing out of it. Number seven, in the end, God, let's talk about God, strictly God now. God looked at the whole situation. As you always know, I said, God see the whole parade. We see what? We see, we have to stand on the curve and watch the parade go by. God seen, when God looked at the parade, he looked at the very end of the parade to the beginning. And when God looked at the, the, the end of parade, he looked at the beginning, then he looked at the middle. God seen everything. He seen the beginning, he seen the, the middle and the end. But he started off on the end, the middle, and then worked to the beginning. So God already knew the last person that was going to walk in the parade. He knew it. Now, you know it, brother. Now, you know it, sister. God is not going to bless your relationships. So I'm saving some men, some brother and sister, some money right now. You want to come to me and you want me to help you work through that mess you got through. That's above my pay grade. You need God. But listen to this. Why are you in that mess? As it is written in the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, 15 through 16. Isaiah, chapter 1, 15 through 16. Isaiah, 15 Chapter 15, I mean, chapter 1, 15 through 16. Listen to these chilling words, okay? God is talking. When you spread it out your hands in prayer, I hear my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, I am not listening to you. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourself clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Let me read that again to some of you sisters and brothers that you want God to intervene in this mess. Now, God will forgive you, brother. If, you get, if you're in a situation like that, God will forgive you, brother. God will forgive you, sister, but guess what God will not do? He's not going to take away the consequence. 
And I always say to my brother, so a lot of time, this including me on anything, we we sin. And when we sin, we pray to God and we say, God, please forgive me for this particular sin or this particular sin or this particular sin. God will forgive us. He will give us a clean slate. However, God does not take that agricultural part away, the sowing and the reaping. You see, when most of the time when we pray to God, we want God to take away the consequence. That's what we be trying. Let's be real. We want God to take away the consequence. But the truth is, it's a truth and it's a consequence. The truth is, God is holy. That's the truth. God don't like us to sin. That's the truth. God knows if we sin, we're going to get punished. If you're a Christian brother or a Christian sister, God is like your parent. He's the father, right? As you all know, my brother and sister, most of you got children, right? You discipline your children. However, you still love your children. You see the point I'm making? You love your child. You said, don't go touch that stove. It's hot. They touched it. They got burnt. Right? Or you said, don't go in that kitchen and eat the old cookies because we, we about to eat dinner. You go into the another room and little Johnny or little Susan open the cookie jar because they're going to see where you at. They're going to stick their hand in the cookie jar and they hear you coming back. Then they put the, then they put the, uh, the top back on the cookie jar and you say, Johnny or Susan, did you eat any cookies? Uh-uh. I ain't eating no mama. I ain't eating no mama. But you see all those crumbs on their mouth. Then you introduce them to the board of education. You know the board of education. You you put some to their butts, but you still love your child. You understand? You love your child. Your child disobeyed you, so you had to take your child to the woodshed. You can't do. You bet you you in trouble if you do that woodshed stuff now because they were called defects and all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about in our day, brother and sister. When you go to the woodshed, a lot of you familiar with the switches where you used to have to go get a switch out the tree. A lot of you familiar with belts, right? A lot of you familiar with uh, Hot Wheel tracks. I know about the Hot Wheel track. A lot of you know about the extension cord, right? Or a shoe or a backhand. You all know about that kind of stuff, but we still, a lot of us, we still turn out to be okay. It will call discipline. It did not mean that our parents hated us. They loved us because they were trying to set us on the right path. You understand, my brother and sister? Train up a child in the way he should go, and he or she will basically not leave. They may get off track, but they're coming back. That's just like God, my brother and sister. God going to set you up to go in the on the uh, narrow road. He know you may he know you're going to go off track. He already know this. It's already programmed. That's why Jesus came and he died he died for our past sin before we even got here. Jesus died for our past sin what he knew we were going to do. Jesus died for our present sin that he knew we were going to do and he died for our future sin cuz Jesus died for everything, but you're going to pay the price again. In the end, God is not going to bless that relationship. You're going to have a problem in that relationship. And let me tell you what's going to happen. Remember I said the sowing and the reaping, right? This is what normally happens. Brother, that woman came to you. Willfully, she came to you. Sister, that man willfully came to you. This is what normally happens. And the end. One of you or both of you gonna start. This is what's gonna happen, brother. Be get ready for it. She left her husband for you, right? She going to start seeing somebody else on the side. I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know. If it happens, she going to start seeing someone else on the side. Sister, that man left his wife for you. I must tell you. He's going to see another woman on the side. And it may be multiple men or multiple women. And let me get a little more detail. You were used to participating in that activity too, right? 
So, brother, you probably going to start seeing another woman. Sister, you probably going to start seeing another man. And then y'all going to end up being roommates. One of you going to try to be more faithful to the other. And that's the twisted part. One of you going to be trying to be more faithful in that relationship. You going to hurt the most. You're going to shed the most tears. But what you don't, but what you forgot, that man was married to another woman. Or that woman was married to another man. So save your tears. You signed up to be in that position, brother. You signed up to be in that position, sister. So let me tell you again. According to Isaiah chapter 1, thank you, Sister Cheryl, 15 through 16. Isaiah chapter 1, 15 through 16. Isaiah 15 through 16. It said, when you spread out your, your hands in prayer. Now, you're going to go to God in prayer. That's what God is basically saying. You're going to spread out your hand in prayer. You're going to get on your knees and you're going to pray. Your prayer is not going to go beyond your ceiling. I got to tell you, I got to make a graphic for, for you. Your prayer is not going beyond your ceiling. The Lord said, I hide my eyes from you. The Lord is going to look away from you. He's going to look away. He don't even want to see. He don't even want to look at you because you're in all that mess. You, you praying to God, you're praying to the ceiling, and ain't going beyond the ceiling. And God, God see what you're trying to do, then he turn like this. And then he probably look at the thing and doing start doing it. And he look, and he be running the world another way. He be running the world, the universe another way. Why are you crying? He ain't no hear your tip. Even when you often when you offer many prayers, he said when you offer many prayer and this the clincher, I am not listening. So not only does God stop looking at you, he do he does like this. So God is not looking, he's not looking at you, and he got the ears closed. Your hands are full of blood. The correction is wash and make yourself clean. Take your take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. So listen to what God said. Wash and make yourself clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. God wants you to bounce from that, that wrong type of relationship. You got in that mess, you got to get out of it. Because that's how you do it, to get clean and stuff. God is not going, he, what can God do when you're in, a, when you're in doing all that evil stuff? But your friends, your family, or your family is okay with their relationship. Your friends okay, but God is not uh, okay with the relationship. So who, who are opinion count? Who thought count? God or your family or friend or your thought or your or that man or woman thought. So you knew it, brother. You knew it, sister. You knew he or she was in another relationship, and he or she strictly left that relationship for you. Now, what are you going to get? You're going to get heartache. You're going to get pain and suffering. And you're not going to get no uh compensation from it. The only compensation you're going to get, you're going to get bankrupt in the mind. You're going to get bankrupt in your heart. You're going to get bankrupt in your finance. You're going to get all kinds of bankrupt. And people are going to look at you and they're going to just shake their head. My brothers and sisters, thank you so much for being a part of this dinner table. I hope that you all enjoyed this food for the soul. If you have any question or comment, you can put it down in the uh, chat box. If you have any question or comment, and I will answer it for you, okay? If you don't have anything, just take some of the good food for the soul, share it with other family members and friends, and you can revisit it. Just put it in the microwave, okay? I love you, brothers, and I love you, sisters. Remember that. Believe that. Say la vie. Peace out.